So welcome to the required uh, partner show. Um, so we've got a um, treat for you today. Robert Greening from CloudCall is going to talk to us about how to turn conversation into actionable insight. Um, that looks like quite a high bar for us to hit, but we'll do our very best. Um, <laughs> a reminder for anyone who um, has watched the live shows before, you're more than welcome. Um, it's an interactive event. More than welcome to throw a question in on the live chat and um, we'll do our very best to answer it. So, um, Rob, tell me a bit about yourself. Um, what's your background and, and how did you end up at CloudCorp? Yeah, well, uh, Andy, firstly, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, always a pleasure. Um, CloudCorp, so two things really, actually. Um, one, I used to use CloudCorp um, in, a, in, a, in a previous company. Um, and my background prior to uh, CloudCall is selling CRMs. So uh, the CRMs that I used to sell all integrated with CloudCall. So I was very familiar with what it done, um, the customers that were using it. Um, and it was just a natural uh, progression for me in the, clear, in the career ladder when a, when a role at CloudCall came up. Are you allowed to share which CRMs you used to work for and sell? Yeah, I used to work for uh, TempWorks and Access. So within the Access, okay. suite, there's a there's a there's a few CRMs that actually integrate with CloudCall. Profile, RDB. Yeah, it's a few. Could have just <laughs> could have just stalked you on LinkedIn to find that out, couldn't they, the users? But I thought I'd make you fess up quite quite early doors. So what attracted you to go work for CloudCall? Uh, I've always had an avid interest in uh, in technology. Um, I've probably been in the industry uh, ten years this year. Spent three years as a recruiter. Um, however, the agency that I was on, ironically, was very manual. We didn't even have a CRM. Everything was done by spreadsheets. I was doing temps and contractors, daily rostering, uh, lots of macros and lots of aggro. And um, I actually helped them. Um, I led the project for them from an operational you know, user side with uh, some independent developers to try and build their own CRM, um, okay. which failed miserably um and we reverted back to spreadsheets um and that was where i got a, a taste for technology and automation at the time my brother was working for bullhorn so we was having lengthy chats you know throughout the project and unfortunately we weren't a right product fit for bullhorn but um yeah leveraging that leveraging him he's x s3 you may even know him um madison black um and uh, yeah, that took me on a, on a progression into technology. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, as I say, I was, I, was, I was working as an account manager in new business sales in those. Uh, I had lots of clients that were using, um, that were using CloudCall. I knew the product very well because I had to help a lot of people with installs and stuff like that. And I uh, got to know the guys well at CloudCall. And then, yeah, a role came up and here I am. But yeah, it's all around. So basically, you were just waiting to jump for them to tap you on the shoulder and say, come work for us. Yeah, you were just tapping them up all the way. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, 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 it's a cool product. You know, it's very, it's very much automation driven. And I'm the laziest person in the world. Um, and I always, I always say you've got to have a lazy person at the company because they find the easiest way to do something. So um... I, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> I was always called a lazy recruiter because I just just had a few clients that I just used to do deals with. Just imagine I had a load more. Um, so yeah. when CRM systems fail, okay, because this is a common thing I hear. You know, people either try and build it themselves or they they implement and. Everyone I hear, no, no one's generally happy about when they put in a CRM system. So you must see it from a vendor point of view. Why, why does it go wrong for people? Yeah, I, I, there's two reasons, actually. The first reason is in a, a breakdown in relationship with a supplier. Um, or the other one is um, generally around data. And what I mean by that is, is every CRM has a lifespan. Um, they very much get treated like filing cabinets and storage houses. Um, adoption rates are generally quite poor across all CRM industries. Um, so you, you're always going to get to a point where you've got to start cleansing your data um, and investing money into it. Um, and that's normally where it goes wrong because a lot of people think rather than reinvesting in the CRM, they go to market and look for a new CRM. Um, and then they take bad data and put it into a new CRM and start with bad data. In fact, the data gets jumbled up quite often in data migrations. I mean, anyone watching this who's done a CRM integration knows it's like moving house without the rooms, names on the boxes, so to speak. Um, 
so that's yeah generally where it goes wrong is um it turns into a glorified filing cabinet yeah good to know so anyone anyone thinking of changing your crm right now might as well stick with your your filing cabinet unless you're going to take that really difficult step to you know really make that change and that difference yeah i mean one thing that i mean when i was at access i worked on the account management side more so than new business sales um, and one thing that struck me was how reluctant people were to invest in, you know, custom work, data cleansing, just some scripts to tidy things up, you know, training in the people, you know, um, when you've got staff training staff, you know, bad habits never go away. Um, it was a hard job. You know, I won't shy away from it. It was a hard job trying to upsell training to people. And when you think that, you know, especially in recruitment right lots of lots of people more than happy to you know chuck 500 quid behind the bar on a friday night um trying to trying to get someone to invest in a couple of hours of training that's gonna you know give you a much greater return than uh, than your saturday hangover um could be hard work at times i was used to hear that about golf if you spend as much time uh, much money on lessons as you did on equipment you'd be a much much better player um i've tried both and i'm still not a much better player so um, <laughs> maybe maybe there's an argument for the money behind the bar and training doesn't need to be mutually mutually exclusive yeah yeah no absolutely so, so obviously you guys provide telephone services that's that's what you're famous for but when we brought you into the network the thing that really surprised me was um, a couple of things actually is just i think the level of your integrations with the crms and your sort of you know the, the sort of the passion around the data and, and you know not all integrations are equal i just thought they were they're not um and the second thing is really the potential for voice going forward um, that's that's what really excites me about you know speaking to you guys and talking about how you can use voice going forward. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, if if you strip that back, um, I mean, a telephone is a telephone, right? But but the reality is, is it's not. It's a, it's a piece of technology, you know. And if you're looking at any you know recruitment company, you know, you've got job boards, LinkedIn licenses, um, CV parsing, all these. Your CRM, you've got all these pieces of um, of technology within the business. Um, yeah, the reality is, is, is most of them are all around well, CRM, customer relationship management, engaging with, attracting candidates, attracting clients. Um, you spend all this money trying to build up a good pool. Um, yet the final and probably the most important hurdle is actually communicating with them. Um, and how do you communicate with somebody? You know, generally, yes, you can email, you can text, you can you know, all that sort of other stuff. But everybody knows the best conversations happen over the telephone. Um, it's a lot more personable. Um, and that's where people fall down. You know, they misconcept telephony as an expense at the end of the process. Well, the reality is, is you shouldn't look at it like that. What, is, what does any good recruiter need when they start out and their budgets are minimal? A telephone, a CRM. Um, and uh and build your relationships from there so that's really where um, have you have you seen a change in that so I, I i think and you know if you ask daughter you know i've been recruiting 48 years he keeps telling me so you know we, we only had the telephone when i started as real and you know um yeah and a fax machine and you know email was just starting to become and we had a good old easy access database but you know telephone was the main the main sort of weapon um, are you seeing, do you see sort of recruiters who still use that get better results than the, the guys who are probably, you know, relying on the emails and relying on the messages? And... Oh, absolutely. I mean, my, um, my motto has always been, and coming from an ex-recruiter myself, you know, the more conversations you have and the better quality of those conversations, the more placements, the more hires you're, you're going to make. You know, we're in a, we're in a huge candidate shortage at the minute um with everything that's going on um and the reality is 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 uh, you've got to get to said person first um and you've also got to make the experience memorable you know because you're not the only person that's going to be talking to them just because you've got there first it doesn't yes you have an advantage but it but it's not concrete yeah so basically you're saying 22 years on um get on the phone still works just as well as it did when i first joined the industry yeah 
Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you can still. I mean, there's, there's many other ways of selling, not just the telephone, but a lot of them are all around building up warm relationships. So you're not necessarily speaking to them cold, but you know, the execution is always picking up the phone. You know, and we do analytics for lots of recruitment agencies. We partner with Cube19. We partner with One Up Sales. Um, we give them information for their an analytics. And uh, the reality is, is those who are on the phones more are generally the, the the bigger billers. I think what's really interesting is the power of data that you guys are sat on. Yes. What was really interesting when I was chatting to Matt and Simon at the start of the partnership was I think it's something like 15 billion phone calls that you guys have recorded over the over the history of Cloud Call. And you know that's just amazing power. Um, you know, it's going to be, you know, Amazon and Google can't have that sort of amount of audio to process um, things. So, you know, wh where can that go? How, how, how can companies use all of that information for you know, meaningful use? Yeah, well, it's just turning it into it's turning it into insight. I mean, every company sat on data, but what is data? Everyone will answer it differently, but the reality is it's just stored information, right? That generally means nothing to no one unless you can do something with it. And, um, and and that really is the bigger picture, you know. Everyone thinks, oh, telephony systems. Oh, yeah, I can do a click to call, or oh, I can automate a note. You know, it's not yeah. the operational efficiencies. Yes, they will. You know, you can have more phone calls, but the bigger picture is actually being able to make decisions based on data, i.e., um, how many calls at this time of day to this type of person, um, and what sort of conversations do you need to be having to get a result. You know, you can spot those trend, your them trends amongst your your staff, um, but also, um, you know, not even just, I suppose, understanding the call as well is probably quite a key one. You know, there's lots of machine learning, AI. Um, we uh, we did a case study actually with Harvey Nash where um, they had uh, they had a young lady there. Uh, she'd only been there three months. Um, they used one of our what we call our supervisor panel to go in and understand um, when she was making the calls, who she was targeting and the conversation she was having. Um, and there were two questions that she wasn't asking on the call um, or, or the calls that she was having. Um, and that was, where else are you interviewing? Uh, and there was one other that I can't remember, but it's on our website. Um, just that small tweak off the back of it. She was their top biller by the end of the year. Um, so you're saying recruit, recruiters pull leads out of people is what you're saying, yeah? Oh, absolutely. I mean, every conversation you have is building your next pipeline. You know, the hamster wheel doesn't stop. You've got to take something away from every conversation. Um, and if you can't do that, then you've got to, you know, you've got to find a way to automating it. But I mean, it's even just going back to, you know, strategy and stuff like that. You know, how can you as a business leader strategize and make decisions based on a salesperson doing admin because you know i speak for myself here Salespeople don't do admin you know half of my calls would not go into our crm we use salesforce if i wasn't using the cloud call plugin um because i make a call and i pick up the phone and i do the next one luckily cloud call does it for me but um you know if you're if you're you know running a list of clients that are due a contact contacts that haven't been spoken to in x amount of months um call types are huge you know you can gauge your relationship with a prospect by the by the amount of calls you've had with them and the types of call you know so every crm's got a call category in it um so when you're able to report on customers that have had this level of engagement this level of interest in this amount of time frame that's where you can really start you know putting together your prospect list delegating work out to who's got to call who um People do not realize just how many opportunities live in their CRM. Um, and the reality is, is that's just because it's been used as a filing cabinet. But when you can turn those conversations into data that you can report on, uh, turn them into insights, you can make you know, strategic decisions off the back of it. Um, I think so many people will be shocked at how many opportunities are in their database that they're just unaware of. So obviously now we're sat um, October, 2021 um, we've gone through a pandemic 18 months into that i'm sat the other side of the world 
you know, you're sat in your spare bedroom with your Peloton bike in the background. So <laughs> how have you seen the world of work change from a cloud call perspective? And, and what challenges have you guys had over the, over the course of the last 18 months? Sure. God, where do, we, where do I start with that? So I suppose the first thing is uh, well, everything's gone digital, right? I think everybody who didn't have their technology stack in order has had a serious wake up call in the last 18 months. Um, I think it's been great for the industry. You know, I've always had a degree of working from home. It's nice to see that other people now get the opportunity. Um, so it's been great from a, you know, a tech shake up standpoint. Um, however, I think it's also been uh, it's good because it's sort of there's no such thing as perfect software um, and every company has really had to work hard change their focus do the things they say they're going to um, because it's out there now everybody's got a flavor of technology in the last year 18 months everybody's been in buying mode so yeah it's certainly weeded out the, um, the cracks within a lot of tech companies and um, it certainly made the ones that rightly deserve it you know shine so um, that's the first thing. I think everything's now gone digital, as I just mentioned. Um, you know, your fancy London offices and you know all these, all these cool things that um, you know and incentives um, are sort of no longer needed. I mean, I've always worked in the city, but the nice thing about working in the city is, is you can pull in talent from you know probably a seventy mile radius of London. You know, the yeah. train networks are, are massive. You know, those fancy offices that you're paying for. Um, now mean nothing um you know really if you want to attract top talent into your business now you've got to you know you've got to be engaged with them you've got to give them the best tools to operate remotely um and then as such if you're um you know if you're a leader within a business um and you are running a remote team you've got to have um you've got to have the right you know tools to be able to monitor performance and um and strategize accordingly so it's um yeah, it's 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 got, it went mad. We had our best sales year in the last well, since my time at Cloud Call. Um, as great as it was, it come with its challenges. You know, with furlough and everything. You know, you're, for the for the same amount of customers I would bring on, I'd have to do three times as many because of furlough. Um, so it was great. It was mad busy for for me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's challenge wise, I probably. Probably off the back of that, I think there was a point where one, we were turning down business. You know, unfortunately, people who didn't have the budget for cloud call, I couldn't be as lenient as maybe I could in a, in a quieter month. Uh, that's certainly a challenge. Another challenge has actually been, you know, we've got 55,000 know, 55, users on cloud call at the minute for probably pre-pandemic 3,000 sites. If you class an office as a site, you know, 10 yeah. people to an office. Overnight, what was it 22nd of March or whatever it was, we went from effectively supporting 3,000 locations to 55,000 because everybody at home is effectively an individual network and a network is an internet connection effectively with VoIP. Um, so out of nowhere, we just had this big, you know, balloon of, right, I'm working from home, um, help. <laughs> you know, it could be something as simple as, Oh, I was logged into my desk phone at work. How do I log into my computer? You know, and uh, if you've got two phones logged in and you want to make a click to call, how do we know which phone to dial out from? We don't, so we'll dial out from both. You pick one up. But people who have never worked in this way don't know that. So, yeah, we had a huge influx of tickets. Um, we couldn't hire quick enough. You know, we had to resort to self-help. Um, it was carnage. You know, we um, we learned a lot as a business and we achieved a lot. You know, we lost a few people We um, as a result of it and um, we hired considerably more. So it was definitely a um, it was definitely a, a, a challenge, but a rewarding challenge. I mean, it's funny. You can throw into the mix of that. You know, you had um, customers needing help, but customers that also couldn't pay because of the pandemic and everything like that. So all of a sudden, we uh, we needed to sort of upscale support teams and resources by three times as much. With at one stage, we had relief out to fifty five percent of our customers. So it was, it was, <laughs> a, crazy, it was a crazy time. Like, yeah, yeah. If I think back mad. to March last year, um, think back to March last year. It was no one knew how long this was going on. Um, everyone was battening down the hatches, you know. And and it's it's interesting, you know. 
hindsight's an amazing thing but you know yeah. some companies it worked well for some companies it didn't even governments it's like the wacky races um you know one government's looking really good like they've nailed it and then suddenly something happens and you know they they're at the back of the field so yeah it was quite you know it, it, it it's been the most interesting social experiment of my lifetime yeah, um, watch, yeah absolutely. Watch, watching it so where does it go now? So what are, we, what, are, what are you seeing? What are your customers telling you right now? So October 2021, what's happening? Um, I would say automation is everybody's sort of hot topic at the minute. Um, and that's just not within cloud core. You know, you look at the other products that are in the you know, sort of recruitment industry tech suite. Um, everything's geared towards automation and it's not for it's not for um, for no reason and, um, and i suppose the way i stand on it is is you know software isn't something that's ever going to replace the recruiter um but it's certainly an enabler to do your job better you know so if you can take away all of the mundane tasks um you know 35 percent of recruiters spend more than one hour a day on manual admin and that's not that's not just admin that's just manual admin you know so taking away all these mundane tasks um, and you transpose it into hours, you know, when it comes to boosting performance in teams, um, you know, if you can give someone an hour back in their day, and you've got eight people in your business. That's the, that's the productivity of one extra person. You know, you transpose it into billings. What's a billing recruiter worth to your business per eight people? Um, so automation for sure is, is is where I see software being big in the in the sort of next year because you know you're not in office anymore you can't crack a whip you can't walk around and look behind someone's screen anymore you know you probably don't want to work for a company where the boss has got your your computer screen on his and checking out your everyday move you know so you've got to take away you know if you want to streamline your operational efficiencies throughout this sort of pandemic period right now as of today. Um, You've got to take away responsibility of all the things that can go wrong, um, all the things that you can do better, um, and automate them. Hundred um, percent. How do people go about getting a demo? Um, it's very difficult for us to do the demo in in such a short period of time. But again, we can probably spin one up on a video. And you know, yeah. how's you know, how long do people need to set aside if they you know if, if someone's deciding on their phone systems or the CRM or they're reviewing their tech stack? Um, how long do they need to invest with you guys to get you know a view on whether or not CloudCore can help them? Sure, uh, half an hour to an hour is fine. Uh, it depends how much you've got to go through. If you you know if you want me to, if you just want a high level overview of of, of what we can do, half an hour, uh, ideally an hour, because it's good to understand how you're currently operating, so I can do the gap analysis and show you the you know where we can add value but yeah in, in order to do so um all somebody's got to do is go on the website there's a contact us form um against all of the crms that we work with there's a short video for what we do on all of them a game with a contact okay. us form or obviously contact me on linkedin i think i think we've got an offer and i stand to be corrected and i get told off by georgiana if i get it wrong but i think anyone who has a demo of cloud call gets a 20 quid voucher just for sitting through an hour you know um an hour of your chat and spiel so, so i think you actually um i think that we're running that offer at the moment which will be on the website so yep. um anyone more than welcome to go on the website fill that in and um you know get to meet the lovely robert for an hour and and get paid 20 quid um actually 20 quid an hour is not that bad wage actually i mean it's double minimum so yeah just, just to listen to my watch, tones <laughs> yeah just just watching a cloud call demo um typically you know so i get i get the voip systems of voip system that's what currently i hear so what's what what's your sell against everyone else who just runs voice over ip sure sure um if you're looking to save money and you're looking for a cheap telephony, um, telephony is telephony, right? It's something that can that can uh, you can pick up the phone, you can make calls with. Um, yeah. But CloudCall makes recruitment companies more money than any cheap telephony system could ever save them. If you if, if you're looking at you know telephony rates, you're talking pounds. You know we're not talking hundreds, we're talking pounds against an individual. Yeah. Um, when you transpose. Um, operational efficiencies of you know 
one hour in somebody's day or you know how what's a placement worth to your business if you if you could do 20 percent more outbound calling within month one of using cloud call that's just one of the very basic figures that should happen just through things like click to call and automatic note login the stuff that you know you don't even need to think about what's 20 percent more of outbound calling worth to your business in terms of placements if you track it back you know, Cloud Call makes recruitment companies more money than cheap telephony can save them, and that's why we've we are the well, we are the industry leader. I, I did think of you guys yesterday because you know you see it on the groups around. You know, when 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 a product goes down or something, it's like the worst thing in the world. Yeah, even companies like you know, but I guess I guess everyone relies on the internet now, and I think I think you know I, I wouldn't like to be the CTO at Facebook right now. No. Uh, you know, looking back on, on on last night, it just goes to show how how reliant we are on technology. Oh, massively, massively, and um, and I suppose, I suppose the irony in all of that is, is you know, yes, yeah, yesterday was carnage. Twitter feeds were through the roof. There was plenty of jokes on here on LinkedIn and stuff like that. But um, you know, how many times does technology actually go down? Well, actually, it goes down a lot. Um, you know, Facebook. How many times do you want a WhatsApp call? You know, and it says reconnecting and stuff like that. Um, and it, it, certainly, the bigger the corporation that, that, that you're that supplying the technology, the less inclined you feel that they are responsible for it. Um, that's something I've I learned quite a lot in uh, in COVID. You know, somebody will ring up and say, "Oh, I've had a I've had a bad I've had, I've had a bad call," and, and ran it down the phone. Um, and, you know, you say, okay, fine, fine, yeah. I don't, you know, I'll ask them, you know, what other devices are you using in the house? Oh, yeah, I use WhatsApp. Well, do you ever have a problem with reconnecting? Sometimes. I'm like, oh, okay, have you called them? Um, <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of those brand recognition things. They used to say uh, that in retail about, Mark, about Marks and Spencers. I mean, if Sainsbury's didn't have apples, then, you know, Sainsbury's were terrible. If Marks and Spencers didn't have apples, they were really popular. Yeah. So it was it was one of those things that you make you know, excuses for the brand sometimes, don't you? But, yeah. but you're right. I mean, look, the, the issue you have versus a WhatsApp is that, okay, people can pick up the phone to you. Well, hopefully um, they can pick up the phone to you and, and have a rap. Exactly. Um, but, um, but you know, you know, WhatsApp, where do you start? It's a faceless corporation, basically. Yeah. Um, you can have a go at them on the, on, the, on the socials. So, okay, well, look, I think... That's a really good, I've taken quite a bit from that. And, and for me, it's around understanding your calls, um, listening, coaching. I think also as well, where you're sat on that massive data lake, where this can all go in terms of turning all that voice into searchable text, for example, running that through, you talked about machine learning, AI. Uh, yeah, it's just really exciting where it, where it goes. And, you know, I guess... I guess how much how much of what's coming in the future can you tell us about? Sure, sure. Well, we're, we've actually got a project at the minute that um, the nickname is "Picking the Carrots Out of the Out of the Soup." Um, okay. So um, transcribing it's, it, it's, well, it's sentiment analysis is what we're doing. So to strip yeah. that back, um, transcribing i get asked all the time do you transcribe calls and i go okay why do you want transcribing oh we don't have to write any notes down and i say okay but if you have a 30 minute conversation with someone you know that's probably going to be 55 pages worth of notes if the text box is that big in your crm what does that mean you know when you type notes what, what do you do you, you type in you know where they live where the salary contract end yeah. date etc etc um so, so you bullet point the, the, the key stuff. So um, we've got a sentiment analysis project going on at the minute where, you know, if you're on the phone to you know, hypothetically an IT developer, right, um, and they say they're, they're on 50 grand or they're looking for a 50 grand salary. In that conversation, we need to know, is someone aspiring to be an IT developer and they're on 50 grand and they're looking for, say, 70 grand a year or, or something like that? So... Um, not only uh, are, are, are we going to be doing sort of transcribing, but yeah, we're going to be taking away the key metrics out of that conversation and, and, and put it into your CRM for you. Um, so keep an eye on that one. That's going to be a huge development. Um, WhatsApp and other omni-channel stuff, that's all in the pipe. Um, okay. It's pretty much done on our side. We're just waiting on them to, they've got some data stuff that they've got to sort out. Um, and Microsoft Teams as well, you know. we. Um, 
we were we were in the middle of building a video platform um, as the pandemic hit. So yeah, the pandemic hits and the whole world switches to Zoom and Teams. Um, there was just no point us continuing it any further. We thought, right. Yeah, <laughs> video products are hard work. Yeah, I know yeah. that from, from from experience. And you got a new app coming as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we've got a new app. So. Uh, um, We've got an app coming out on the same codec as Teams and WhatsApp. So in terms of voice quality, um, you're not going to be able to get any better. That's in beta at the moment. That's in its final stages. Uh, yeah, we've got Teams video integrations and stuff like that coming out very shortly. So yeah, very strong roadmap and pipeline of things to come. Sounds good. So um, people can find you on LinkedIn. They can find yep. you on the cloud Call website or if they want to um go through get the offer um pop through um book it via required.com and um, find out how cloud Call can turn conversation into actionable insight so um really good to chat again rob and yep, um, yes, yeah looking forward to uh um to seeing those seeing those things come through so um we catch up soon brilliant